Um, so this, this handout is just to replace uh, the first paragraph of section 20 of the report, so just to verbally read it out loud. Um, so it should read, it's been identified the proposed development would conflict with policy RE3 of the local plan 2018, as harm to the A and B and AGLV has been identified. Whilst the A and B is a footnote 7 area in the MPPF, the harm identified in the view of officers would not amount for a clear reason for refusal, and as such, the tilted balance would remain in this circumstance. Taking into account any harm, including the harm to A and B, the harm would not significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits. And just to quickly also run through the um, the update sheet that you will have received as well. Um, so since since the publishing of the agenda, an ecological report was submitted by the applicant and fully assessed by Surrey Wildlife Trust, who raised no objection subject to the conditions on the update sheet. Um, the council has also updated its five-year housing land supply, which currently estimates we have uh, 4.3 years worth of supply. And um, as with last week's item at the reeds, um, notice needs to be served by the applicant with respect to the freehold title, 200 foot below ground owned by the Church Commissioners of England. So the recommendation is therefore altered to include this 21 day notice period to expire. So this is an outline application with all matters reserved for the erection of an agricultural manager's dwelling in the Reeds Tilford. The site is situated within the Greenbelt um, and AOMB and comprises of an agricultural field. The field forms part of the wider CGJ Matthias and Sun Nurseries and has an existing access off the Reeds, til til off the Reeds and Tilford is situated to the east. The wider nursery is displayed on the screen now is split um, into a container nursery to the north and open ground to the south. The field in yellow um, is approximately, is the, the field where the dwelling will be sited within. Um, and it is proposed that the dwelling helps sort of facilitate the expansion proposed um, through, at, with the business in this area in yellow. The aerial view shows the rural context of the site uh, set amongst open fields with some light development to the east and west. So here we have uh, photo A and photo A is taken sort of in the approximate location um, of the dwelling and looks northwest towards the Reeds Road. The land levels raise fairly steeply and mostly screen the sighting of the dwelling from, from the Reeds. Photo B looks south, uh, south house down the field towards the open agricultural field and then photo c is taken from right away 513 and looks um looks at the eastward across the open field towards the application site which is approximately 220 meters away um might be a little bit blurry but in the backdrop there is sort of um some visible development within this sort of wider landscape and then photo d is taken from footpath five and is approximately 330 metres away from the proposed dwelling. The riverway is set between this footpath um, and the site, whilst the land levels also rise towards the middle of the application field. And then photo E is taken from the Reeds Road, looking towards the established mature boundary, which is previously mentioned as a higher, at higher level than the application site. And photo F is taken from the Reeds Road looking into the existing access. 
So the, the main matters of consideration are the impacts on the green belt, the impacts on the AOMB and AGLV, location of development and the essential need for a rural work, worker's dwelling. So in this instance, officers are satisfied the applicant has sufficiently demonstrated the need for a rural worker's dwelling in this specific site as outlined in section nine of the committee report and as such would comply with paragraph 80A of the MPPF. Furthermore, the dwelling would help facilitate the expansion of the existing business, including the open ground portion of the business by approximately 70%. This support would also weigh in favour of development and support the rural business in line with paragraph 79 and 84 of the MPPF. Um, it is also considered that these benefits would amount to very special circumstances, which um, would outweigh the harm to the Greenbelt. And then in accordance with paragraph 176 of the MPPF, great weight should be given to the conservation and enhancement of the AOMB and AGLB landscapes. As detailed in section 12 uh, of the officer's report, the introduction of a dwelling at the site would be harmful to the AOMB and AGLV, and as such, there would be conflict with this, uh, with the policy RE3. However, it's noted there are factors, which you saw from the photos as well, which help to mitigate this harm, also as detailed in section 12 of the report. As such, on balance, officers are satisfied in this instance, the essential need of the agricultural manager's dwelling outweighs the identified harm and as such is recommending approval. This is subject to the completion of a section 106 agreement, which ensure the, which would ensure the agricultural tie in perpetuity. Thank you, Chair. Well, thank you very much. We've got four public speakers now on this item. And this one, I hope I get the surname right. If I, give, if I haven't, I'd have to give you, you must forgive me. Giles Err? Giles, you have, is he online or is he here with us? Okay. I'm here. Ah, oh, good evening, thought, Giles. I, I'm not, can I not, uh, don't you be able to get the visual up? Sorry. Okay. Oh, can we, I'm afraid I'm just going to have to do it with sound. I beg, beg all, all your pardons. Well, we can all hear you, Mr. So, right, so. okay. Are you got four right. minutes, Mr. Right, my name is Giles Eyre. I live near the site. I represent a number of objectors who include Surrey Hills and CPRE. This unusual application is for an isolated 300 square meter, four bedroom house and driveway with office and facilities for workers set in open fields outside Tilford, the Reed site, which are AONMB, AGLV and Greenbelt and adjacent to ancient woodland on the ground that is essential for a rural worker to live there on this visually exposed plot. As you've heard, the Mathias estate consists of the main container site with two dwellings and woodland, an open field site at Sheep Hatch and the Reed site, the subject of the application, currently agricultural land, all, all of these properties within two minutes drive of each other. In the absence of the rural worker exception, this application will be a complete non-starter because of the harm it will cause to this most sensitive landscape as the officer accepts. Para 176 of MPPA states your obligation to give great weight to conserving and enhancing the landscape and the scenic beauty of an AONV. The officer in dealing with essential need relies on RAC's report, which advised only on the pre-app in June 2021 and not on this application. RAC refer, Para 18, to an essential need on or near the holding, i.e. not the reed site, but the whole of the Matthias estate. They then concluded weekly only that it was possible to make out a case. The officer has not required any independent assessment of the assertions in the design and access statement, and the applicant has to prove the viability of the business will be threatened if he can't reside on this site. MPPF Par 80 states, decisions should avoid the development of isolated homes in the countryside unless there's an essential need for a rural worker to live permanently at or near the place of work, and the guidance relates essential need to farm animals or agricultural processes requiring on-site attention 24 hours a day, or risks to animals or health or from crime, or to deal with emergencies that cause serious loss of crops. That is not a nursery in Tilford. It may be convenient to live on the Reed site. It's not essential, and there is no functional need to do so. The control of irrigation, frost protection, crop spraying, deer control and crime all can be effectively managed by a worker living nearby. There's no independent evidence submitted to suggest otherwise. If with autom automation, irrigation still needs checking daily, this does not require a person living on site. And crop spraying is infrequent, particularly in a holistic nursery such as this. Crime is not a major issue locally. There is very limited road access to the reed site, and it can be managed by fencing, sensors and alarms. Open field nursery sites without resident workers are commonly found in the area, including the Matthias site at Sheep Hatch and the large site at Oxenford. 
there are no successful rural workers dwelling applications in Waverley for nursery workers, as opposed to livestock farms, since online records began in 2002, and this is replicated throughout the UK. Alternative accommodation exists. Eight properties sold within half a mile of the site at under 700k in the past 24 months. This week I found two houses at 550k and two flats at 300k in the nearby Bourne area, less than the cost of this new build. Conclusion. Essential need to build at this site is not proven. In any event, AONB and Greenbelt restrictions taken together outweigh such a substantial, isolated and visually exposed dwelling, three times the normal size of a rural worker's dwelling, being located on the Reed site. Finally, before making any decision, you should visit the main Mathias site, the Sheep Hatch Open Nursery and the Reed site. If new build is required, this can be accommodated on the partially developed main Mathias site without the damage to this particular landscape. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Giles. Uh, the next public speaker is William Matthias, Matthias is in support of the application. William, you have four minutes. There are many ways that we can all play our part in tackling climate change, but most recognise that tree planting and creating a greener environment is key. Indeed, the government, local authorities, charities and institutions have all set out ambitious targets for tree planting. The declaration of a climate change emergency and commitment to increase tree and canopy cover led Surrey County Council to set a target for the planting of 1.2 million new trees by 2030. These targets rely on the availability of trees in the marketplace. We cannot simply imagine them out of thin air. Every tree that is pledged must be grown on a nursery somewhere, and many of those nurseries are outside the UK. Post-Brexit, and with a greater focus on the carbon impact of foreign imports, the opportunity for UK nurseries is greater than ever. As you will have read, our business is already one of the leading UK nurseries in our sector, and we take great pride in the quality of our production and efficiency. But we have reached a limit, and without further expansion, our business cannot meet the ever-growing demand. I represent the sixth generation of my family to have been a custodian of land in Tilford. My father, who has run the business his entire life, is beyond normal retirement age, and therefore my brother and I, who have worked in the business for several years, are now taking majority control. The proposal set out in our application involves bringing in 35 acres of land into nursery stock production, and will represent our single biggest production area, holding several million pounds worth of trees. This will triple our current production capacity, and every tree that is grown on our nursery is destined to be planted in the UK. Additionally, this will be hugely beneficial to the rural economy and provide significant further local employment. We have demonstrated in this application, which has been verified by Waverley's appointed experts, Reading Agricultural Consultants, that our crop requires 24-7 management, and without a dwelling on this specific site, we cannot achieve this. Therefore, it will be impossible for us to proceed with the expansion of our production if this application is not granted. It is quite right that the countryside in areas such as Tilford is protected from inappropriate development. However, provision is made within paragraph 147 of the NPPF that very special circumstances can exist to permit what would otherwise be viewed as inappropriate development. It is the view of Waverley's planning department that in this instance, the essential need for a rural worker's dwelling at this specific site outweighs the harm to the green belt, and as such amounts to very special circumstances, which are considered sufficient to set aside this policy of restraint. Furthermore, paragraph 80 of the NPPF specifically makes provision for isolated rural workers' dwellings in open countryside, which is also mirrored in policy DM16 of Waverley's draft local plan part two. As such, this application sets no precedent for development in the countryside, as it is highly unusual that these special circumstances exist and they must be rigorously demonstrated. This application is the product of a pre-application consultation that was started in September 2020 with Waverley. We sought to use the pre-planning process in order to ensure that we, that we engaged at the earliest opportunity with Waverley, and we have received supportive feedback throughout from planning officers and their agricultural consultants. 
This application is both unusual and niche, and as such, Waverley quite rightly saw fit to engage specialist consultants to advise on this highly specific area of planning policy. 30 seconds. These consultants have supported our application for the essential need for a dwelling in this specific location. Furthermore, Waverley Planning Department have concluded that the need for this dwelling outweighs the harm to this protected area, and therefore this application should be granted. By supporting our application, you are directly supporting this area's green economy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next public speaker is from Tilford Parish Council, Nigel Moreland. Nigel. It's Nigel. Thank you. My name is Nigel Morland. I'm a new Tilford Parish Councillor. And in the absence of our chair, I took on the responsibility of chairing the extraordinary meeting to discuss this application at Tilford Parish Council. And that's why I'm here tonight. For the committee's information, three key areas were discussed in quite some detail at our meeting. In the end, Tilford Parish Council only advises, so we are reassured that for such a significant proposal, the full planning committee are giving it their considered attention in reaching a final decision. The three principal areas we focused on were whether the proposed location truly qualifies as essential, and I'll come back to that keyword later. Given the impact and harm of such a large, significant building with associated driveway, hard standing for visiting cars, lorries and vehicles on a completely greenfield site in an AONB and green belt clearly visible from rights of way. Secondly, a revised proposal for a dwelling in the vicinity of the existing nursery buildings would appear to be likely to receive support, including from those objecting to this proposal, and would still leave Will close enough to the field to supervise the growing trees and hedging plants. Indeed, in their own app submission, Will and Charlotte state they have been unable to find local long-term accommodation, implying the need actually to be located in the field itself is not truly essential. The suggestion has been made that there appear to be areas on the main nursery site that whilst not necessarily brownfield land by formal definition, could be repurposed. Thirdly, we were also concerned at the precedent that would be set. Whilst we've been told that no decision sets a precedent for other proposals, it is interesting nevertheless to see how often other decisions are cited in, as examples in applications that we see. Allowing a large building on a completely greenfield site on the basis that it is an essential agricultural need for the growing of trees and shrubs to be supervised could be a decision welcomed by many others and create further harm and damage to this green belt area. So regarding the word essential, and I'd have to disagree with Will, I don't believe that the agricultural consultants said it was essential on this site. They said there was a case to be made and we don't think the case has been made. Uh, advice from a local agricultural consultant was that the word essential is fundamental. And he was surprised, in fact, astonished, to see it suggested that a dwelling in a field growing trees and hedging plants was essential. Given the technology nowadays available, water, frost, and security can easily be monitored remotely. Other matters were raised, including traffic on a narrow road, the size of the building, and whether a satisfactory water extraction license had actually now been obtained, and whether the site was viable absent that license. But the above three main issues were felt to be the key ones. The point was also made repeatedly that however much everyone liked and supported the family and this local business, as can be seen in the numerous comments of support, it's not a reason to support an application in contravention of planning policy. 30 seconds, I know. In summary, the location of the proposed building is in the heart of Greenbelt, Surrey Hills, AGLV, Surrey Hills AM, being close to ancient woodland. Lastly, in the event this application is declined, it is the earnest hope of the Parish Council that Will and Charlotte be given some guiding comments from the Planning Committee whether a revised application for a suitable house on the main nursery site would be more likely to be received favourably, 
recognising, of course, that no absolute guarantee can be given. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Morland. Right, another public speaker is Councillor Julia Potts. Councillor Potts, we have four minutes now, and of course you've got four minutes at the end if you wish to take advantage of that. Councillor Potts, good evening to you. Good evening. Good evening, Chairman. Good evening, um, members of the committee. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Um, a lot of what I was going to say has actually already been said by the speakers, um, Mr. Eyre and um, uh, Councillor Morland. So I'm not going to spend the committee and take up committee time repeating a lot of that. Um, but what I will say is this, that I have some very serious concerns about this application in its current form. Um, and I'd ask the committee to very carefully scrutinize the following key points before you determining uh, the application this evening. Um, both Councillor Adams and myself talked at length about this over a number of months. And I want to highlight, and especially um, for Mr. Matthias as well and his family, that we really did recognise the importance of that business in Tilford and to the rural economy. So we are mindful of that. Um, we also support the business and we simply felt that this was not the right application in the right place. And that's what a lot of this really does come down to. And we've talked about, and you've heard about the context of the site, and you've got before you this evening committee, four main matters for consideration, the location, the essential need, the impact on the green belt and the impact on AGLV. In terms of location, there are other suitable locations within the landowner's um, uh, remit, within their ownership, that are very close. All the sites they have, they have three sites across the village, are within a very, very short drive. And I'm talking under five minutes drive. Um, we already have a precedent set because at one of those sites, there are two dwellings already, two agricultural dwellings. So we then come on to essential need. Well, I think at the moment, I don't think that that has really been bottomed out by the consultants and by the uh, issues and, and concerns that have been raised. When we come on to the green belt and we talk about AGLV, both of those are critical here. This is an incredibly sensitive area, incredibly sensitive site and habitat. And the impact is clearly going to be very detrimental and very damaging. So all of that comes down to a planning balance and a planning judgment. And I would say that at the moment with everything before you, all I would ask you to do as a committee is scrutinize very carefully, look at this, and I would suggest respectfully that you refuse the application before you this evening, given the grounds that we already have very clearly and the conflict with the two policies, RE2 and RE3, in our Waverley local plan. And I would also urge that the applicant come back and engage with the local community and let us look at a more suitable site and a more suitable dwelling so that they can expand their business, they can have housing uh, that is suitable for agricultural and rural purposes and that everyone can then really support this business as it moves forward and grows within our local community. Thank you very much for your time, Chairman and members of the committee. I look forward to hearing your debate on this matter and we'll come back at the end or reserve the right certainly to Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Watson. You have four minutes at the end. Right, okay, Councillor, up to you and I believe Councillor Mullen is first with the hand up. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I've got actually a preliminary matter to raise. Um, and not the one you were expecting, that'll come in a second. Um, I must express some dismay to see this document, handout, paragraph replaced, the first paragraph, section 20, handed to us literally 
moments before the meeting began. I appreciate there are often updates that have to be given, but this one is not only as late as it can be, but actually I think it is incorrect. Um, sadly, I take a great interest in planning applications which go to law and Hazelmere, my hometown, has been the source of one case, which in fact is somewhere near the Supreme Court at the moment. It was a house called Long Dean House, and it was eventually refused on, on appeal, but the applicant then went to the High Court and the High Court rejected their particular um, argument, which was precisely on what a clear reason for refusal meant. And the Court of Appeal, as I say, up, upheld the, the High Court. So much as I respect Mr. Devlin and our other lawyers, um, I'm afraid I feel more inclined to respect the senior president of the tribunals, a Court of Appeal judge. And all that a clear reason is, is that harm to the AONB and AGLV can provide a clear reason for, for refusal, and it does disengage the tilted balance. And yet what we are told in this update at the end of the first paragraph, and as such, the tilted balance would remain in the circumstances. That in my respectful submission is simply wrong and could lead to an incorrect decision being given. Um, I, would, I was going to move on and suggest we should defer this matter to allow a site visit. And I wish to apologize for the fact that there is a perfectly common approach to getting site visits in paragraph um, six. Of our, uh, of our agenda, and I'm sorry to say I didn't get around to looking at this in detail until a bit later in the, in the process. I agree with the speaker from the Parish Council, it would be a good idea, or sorry, the first speaker, for the committee to actually look at, look at this. Um, there are some, I've driven around it and noticed the Sheep Hatch Lane separating the main um, Matthias site from one of its large open grounds open ground nurseries and wondering why that one was being left to itself without someone living on it, whereas this one apparently is different. I also realised that you have to go there to actually um, see what is there and what this would do, would do. I know there are some members, maybe Council Coburn knows it well, but a lot of us probably don't. So, and now with this, and also we see in the papers that they have to wait 21 days because 200 meters or 200 feet below the surface, there's mining land, the church commissioners have to say they're not going to do anything about it. So I would exceptionally ask um, to see if I have a seconder, of course, I would move that we do defer this and hold a site visit. And also given this last point, which is we've been given some advice, which I fear is incorrect. And I don't think it would be right to judge this application until we're absolutely clear on the significance of the harm to the AONB, um, which in my opinion, clearly disengages the tilted balance. So it's, it is a flat balance, if you, if you like. If we think the harm slightly outweighs the benefits, we would refuse. If we think the benefits slightly outweigh the harm, we would approve. But for all those reasons, Mr. Chairman, I therefore would like to move that we defer this matter. And obviously I must depend upon some other member of the committee agreeing sufficiently to second it. If I don't get a seconder, then this motion falls. So if I may stop there for a moment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't think we disagree with Councillor Mullin. Now. I think um, limb one of uh, paragraph 11 of the MPPF, which is all to do with the tilted balance, um, makes it clear that if there is a clear reason uh, for refusing the development proposed in terms of policies set out in the footnote, which include AOMB, um, other, other green space, green, green belt policies, then um, you stop there. If it, in the judgment of members, there is a clear reason for refusing the development proposed, you stop there. You don't go on further to consider the uh, tilted balance in in paragraph D2, I think perhaps it's a misunderstanding the way we've hurriedly set, set this out, and I do apologize to, to the committee for that. Um, if, in other words, if the committee decided there was no clear conflict with uh, A and B policy and, and other um, similar policy, then they could proceed to the uh, tilted balancing judgment in the next part of that.
paragraph, that, that is a judgment for members in the view of the planning officer's own appraisal of matter. Can I just add, add yes. to that, if that's, that's okay? The, um, what I would say is that is the position that's set out in the officer's report, that there, there, um, that there is a tilted balance because uh, because that um, because the foot because of the footnote. But if members did, what that doesn't mean is that if members did find that there was a clear reason for refusal um, on the AOMB grounds or the green belt grounds, then the tilted balance would fall away at that at that point. So um, it does depend on the the position in terms of those two policies. Have we got a second of Mr. Moore's Captain Moore's proposal? Yeah. No. Uh, yes, no. I, might, I might be, um, Mr. Chairman, but um, I'd, I'd like to first investigate other reasons why we might wish to defer, if that's the case, because... Um, uh, no? Are you on the, on the... Are we talking about on, on, on Councillor Mulliner's proposal to, or uh, on well, the, I don't think Councillor Mulliner has a second at the moment, does he? the substantive. Sorry, I'm just moving that we defer, and I've given some 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 brief brief reasons. Um, there could be others. I don't dis dispute that, but I mean, un unless we have a have have a motion which is second seconded, this this cannot proceed. So it's up to the committee once, if it is seconded, then to vote whether they want to defer or whether they want to consider it now. So yeah. it's up to you. If you want to want to second it, then we'll have a debate about whether to defer or not. If you don't and no one else does, then the matter will sort of finish now. I'll second, thanks. Councillor Corburn. I, I would speak against the deferral. I, I really would. This has been going on for months, if not years. What, um, Mr. Messiah said that they had the first meeting September 2020. We know the site, we know the AMB, AONB and the Greenbelt policies. Um, I really don't think there is any need for a site visit. And what will always happen on these site visits is you and I will turn up, Mr. Beeman, um, and the person who actually asked for the site visit won't turn up or anybody else for that matter. So um, I just think quite frankly, that in this particular case, we've got more than enough information to make a, a really well-informed decision. And I don't think we should delay the decision for a site visit personally. Is anyone else on the motion that's been put forward? No. I should vote on the motion, don't we? Well, the motion is that we defer, because those who are in favor of that, could you please raise your hands? Um, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Was there any abstentions, by the way? Right, okay, so we need on to discuss. Anyone want to speak about the proposal? Yes, I'm Well, I'll get my substantive points um, over. Um, I start off with, with, with sympathy for this sort of apl application because I do see the need to support rural, rural businesses. But <clears throat> having read both the officers' comments and the Reading Agricultural Cons Consultants report carefully. There are three points that I think were probably mirrored by the Parish Council. Um, first and foremost, I am much less inclined to believe that a building on site is essential when the object, the trees and the plants are not ones which require the same sort of intense emergency application as animals. And given modern te technology, much of the care can be done by someone who is not perhaps physically on the site, especially if they can get there within literally a couple of minutes. And having driven around there, one appreciates how, how close everything is to everything else. I did notice the point about sec security and the risk of theft fully understand that, but I did notice, and if the officer could put back the most colorful of the maps, which we saw at the start on screen.
There we are. Thank you. Yes, if you look at the bottom right hand corner of the main area, you see um, one of two large open ground nurseries. Having driven down Sheep Hatch Lane, which is that narrow crack, you've got the open ground nursery in purple, then a triangle of woodland, and then you've got Sheep Hatch Lane dividing that from the main um, con container nursery area. And I checked for myself, and you simply cannot see. Um, from inside the container area into the open ground nursery. And that presume, and that looked extremely well stocked with trees and shrubs. And I saw people working on it. So um, I can only assume that that's been a satisfactory security situation uh, for some time. I think if the applicant um, wished to come back at a later stage, if we refuse, that is, um, with more data as to the risk of theft, that would be relevant. Um, that's, so that's one. Secondly, um, citing. Um, all I've read about these sorts of applications, what are now called paragraph 80A applications, these to be paragraph 79A till the recent revision, I suggest that the other aspects of uh, planning harm and benefit should not be, be ignored. And there may indeed be less harmful locations for a building, for a, for a dwelling than the one chosen, which does seem to me pretty obvious from many long, long views. And one should remember that the harm to the AONB is often expressed in terms of the long views. And the fact that people don't own land doesn't mean they can't validly be on it and can enjoy the long views. And that's the big problem of putting a house where they propose to do it. And the third one is simply size. Um, this does seem to be at least twice as large, if not three times as large as your average rural workers dwelling. Um, we haven't yet got LPP2 in place. Um, if we did, then that would make it very difficult, I think, to, to approve this and looking around the, around the country. In Dorset, 140 meters, square meters, including 20 of office space was felt to be adequate. In Exmoor, it's even less, it's more like 90. So for all those reasons, um, while I listen very carefully to what other people have to, have to say, and despite my basic sympathy for the Matthias in this, I'm not inclined to go with the officer's recommendations as things stand, in the hope they would come back with a more attractive application at a reasonably um, nearby date. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Anybody else wish to be on this item? Ah, Councillor Deer. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I think this is really difficult. There's clearly a need to support rural businesses, rural economies, rural activities. Um, but at the same time, obviously, I've been listening to what um, the uh, Mr. The Councillor Morland was saying about uh, the circumstances. Um, but one thing does uh, strike me as uh, standing out rather, which is the proposed uh, square meterage of the building. Yes, I can understand the need for uh, accommodation. Um, it's not livestock, so you know there's a sort of mitigation factor there. But um, 2,900 square meters is just over 3,000 square feet. Um, if it's a one-story building, it's 56 feet square which sounds to me quite a substantial construction. And if it's two stories, it's 39 feet square. Um, there's been suggestions about, well, let's see if we can schmooze something with the local community that might be more acceptable. I fear that anything uh, of this nature is probably going to angry up a lot of people. And I'm not entirely sure what would be practically achievable by a longer consultation with um, inverted commas, the community, and we have this in front of us uh, here today. So I am torn. Um, I want to support the business. I want to see activity growing. I want to make the, the, the idea of this sort of business more viable. But at the same time, we are under an obligation to protect the green belt insofar as we can. There are provisions for this sort of thing as exceptions to the green belt. Um, I'm sort of coming down on the idea that I would probably support this, but um, if there's a slam dunk argument from another member, I would be um, changing my mind on that, I think. I think it's a really complicated uh, uh, case to have to look at. Thanks. That's why we're here, Councillor Dixon. Councillor Dixon. 
thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just want to um, say, yes, this is a difficult one to begin with. So let's look at some of the issues that have been raised. The first one was whether or not this is special circumstances. And the things that jump out of me as to why, yes, this is a special circumstances is this is a, 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 a very fast, a very large business. And we're talking about investing in a million or almost up to a million pounds worth of treats. At one point, we were told that there have never been any agricultural housing for a nursery in Waverley. And my response to that is how many nursery farms of this type do we have in Waverley? In fact, it's probably quite difficult to try and find two plots of land alongside each other to be able to grow this business efficiently. So the fact that they have found this and that this is a fifth generation business uh, in one of our local areas makes this very special indeed. And also as of all agricultural businesses, they face the uh, triple threat of available land, available, available properties and available staff. So they, they are working in a very difficult environment. So they are very unusual. Uh, they've also come to us with a long track record. They've tried to do this very professionally and been working on pre-planning since September 2020, which is a very good point in their favor. And we've talked a lot about whether or not this is essential. And um, I think um, my colleague, uh, Councillor Mulliner, spoke about whether or not they need to be on site when it's not livestock. But from what I've understood, the value of these plants, and we'll talk about that a bit more, is actually higher than livestock. You know, uh, lambs are, you know, quite expensive, but we know that plants can raise much higher prices than livestock. And also they're saying, okay, we can drive three minutes or four minutes or five minutes, but these are very small lanes. And I'm sure that the, uh, to have a car driving backwards and forwards would, would be equally onerous to the neighbors as, as having a house which is hidden over the hill. And also my, uh, my colleague, Councillor Mulliner said about the risk of theft. He almost seemed to say that we, the uh, applicant had to prove the risk. He almost had to come here with his dead trees in his hands before we would act when rising crime in agriculture is well documented and we read about it and hear about it on a regular basis. And as for uh, security solutions, I've just got this vision of drones flying over Tilford and I'm not sure how the council would respond to that. But for me, the reason why we should say yes to this and it is hard because of the a and and grill issues, is because of the value to the environment. And because we have on many occasions said we wanted to help, um, you know, reverse the greenhouse gases. And we pledged to, um, two years ago, to support, you know, green development. And this is one way we can do it. These gentlemen are growing trees and they're growing them for our, for our neighborhood, in our neighborhood. And uh, you know, it's being done in Waverley, a business in Waverley, and it's helping the environment. For me, that is the absolute, to quote my colleague, Councillor Dean, slam dunk argument. And I suggest we all support this full heartedly. Thank you. Thank you. Now, welcome to later. Did you want to add anything, Carl? Thank you, Chair. Just to come back on a few point, uh, on a point that's been raised a few times too, the size of the dwelling. Um, this is an outline with all matters reserved, so the, the actual size itself will be considered at reserved matters should, um, yeah, should consent be given today. And um, yeah, further sort of expand upon it in section 9.5 of the report. Thank you. Councillor Corbyn, I think you're next. Uh, well, I mean, I'm like everybody else. We can see this is on balance and that awful phrase, uh, you know, where you have to prove very special circumstances is always going to be difficult because obviously every planning application is a balance, you've got to weigh everything. But I'm afraid I have to be consistent here. And um, we have looked, I think this is the third in the row, isn't it, of um, uh, applications, that, quite difficult applications in, in the Green Belt over the last three meetings. and. I cannot see that, given where this is, that there are very special circumstances here. I'm sorry. Um, we have a duty. Um, Councillor Dixon mentions the environment, and yes, you know, growing trees is 
a one, one wonderful way, but also we have to protect what we've already got. And that's the issue we always have with the Green Belt and the AOMB policies, that if we start not protecting them and giving far too easy permissions away, um, then we've lost all that environment and we've just got the built form with all the damage that that causes. Now, I know this is only one house, um, but looking at the uh, site, looking at the area around there, I think this is just a step too far. There has been some development, of course there has been in all these areas in the Green Belt, but our duty under our own policy and under the MPPF is to avoid substantial harm. And I cannot, I've tried desperately hard. I know the business and like everybody else, we want to look after the business, but you know, we cannot say to people, if you plant enough trees, you'll get a house in the green belt. You know, it, it's just so difficult. What are very special circumstances? The MPPF always chickens out of, of these thick matters. You know, it gives you these slightly uh, adaptable phrases. But having read everything, I cannot see the evidence for very special circumstances on this field at this time. I really can't. There is other land available, which would be less sensitive. Um, and for all the arguments, I, uh, you know, I understand um, uh, that, you know, you have to look after a business. I'm not, I'm not stupid, but you don't have to be actually living that close on this particular field. I, I think this is very dangerous. Uh, we turned down something very similar two three meetings ago to protect the green belt and i think we have to be consistent in this one had they proved the very special circumstances if somebody had said to me there is absolutely nowhere else this dwelling could go then i would perhaps re <laughs> rethink there's also the little bit that says you know there'll be an agricultural tie to the dwelling in perpetuity which is always a noble aim, but how many times have we seen those words and how many times has perpetuity not actually protected the, the building in the future? So call me an old cynic if you like, but I really you know, wish the business well, would support perhaps some other uh, development on this site, but I'm afraid this one, I, I just don't see the special circumstances that say we should tear up our green belt, our AOMB policy uh, to put a, a, you know, a substantial dwelling on this particular site. It has to harm the green belt, and I really don't see the very special circumstances that change that. Thank you very much. One more councillor, councillor James, I think. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, an even older cynic here. Um, I was going to bring up the um, application we had, uh, it was two meetings ago, for the replacement of a, a, a tiny old wooden bungalow within the settlement boundary of Chiddingfold is there and the bungalow is nearer than the end of this council chamber um, in, an, in the Green Belt AONB and AGLB and they have a mobile home, the people who live on the site at the moment, because you can't live in that little old shack. Um, and they have, I don't know how many horses, but probably something like 20 or 30. They have to be on site. They've got stables mm -hmm. and everything there, but they didn't go through the, um, the, the special circumstances. But I can assure you, if this one got, a, a, got approval, they certainly would. I'm absolutely convinced um, because they do have to be there with all horses um, and people walking through because their pathways through all their fields. Um, the, the first of the four matters for determination, the top one was location. And the one thing that I could not agree with tonight is the location of this dwelling, whether it's, it's an essential dwelling or not. The location is completely and utterly wrong, in my view, because you've got to have a track the whole way down through a field to even get there. Um, you know, at the, at the entrance to this field, there's a little wooden, a little brick building. Um, you know, which they could make a two-bedroom cottage of if they wish to. They could get 10% bigger anyway under 
they're, what they're allowed to do and have a one bedroomed house if you've got to be on it 24 hours. So somebody could be in it for 24 hours a day and they could live elsewhere, somebody else. Um, so the special needs in my view is not relevant at the moment for a, a building in the location that they wish to put it in. Um, so I, I, I just feel that it, it, because it's not even hidden, it's open, um, there must be other places, and they've obviously, other MEP councillors have said that there are definitely other places. And the fact um, that the last councillor brought up the um, agricultural dwelling in the countryside, a councillor Keynes knows where I came after 16 years in East Hampshire, the amount of agricultural dwellings that got lost, that we even gave permission for, that people then were allowed to say that they could show that they'd lived there for 10 years, they'd never been employed in an agricultural building, and they all got permission to change to residential and from a, a house that was probably cost 100,000 became 1.1 million. Um, so at the moment, I would not be supporting the application. If they find another location in a green belt that's more appropriate, then I might change my view. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. I've still got four councillors to speak. Uh, uh, Councillor Hess, then Councillor Hyman, then Councillor Hunter, then Councillor Keane. Thank you, Chair. Well, just looking at the um, drawing here, um, al although members are saying it's very open, certainly from one direction, there, there appears to be woodland. Um, and, I, and I wonder whether um, if people are so concerned about actually seeing a house uh, later on when it comes back for detailed planning, it could have a landscaping um, condition. Um, I, I rather um, support what Councillor Dixon was saying, that here we've got um, a very important growing agricultural business um, pr providing trees for for the uh, British market um, and I rather feel that if the owner feels the need for a house then I, I rather accept the fact that they know what their needs are and if if it's genuine that it's going to have an agricultural tie um, that it'll be occupied by um, an agricultural worker or, or manager then that's a very good thing because accommodation is in such short supply for people that do these kinds of work. You know, I, I, you've got to have people to make agriculture work, although a lot of it's mechanized, but it still comes down to people and they have to live somewhere. Um, and if it's a growing business, no doubt their payroll will be growing. So they, there's an accommodation requirement. Um, there's also a huge amount of rural crime. Um, equipment of all types gets stolen. Thieves will break into buildings with disc cutters, take bits of equipment, really mess up uh, the operation of businesses. We all know that. And I think having people living on the farm is a good thing to keep an eye on things. Um, so, in the round, I, I would tend to support this and help a local business. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Hyman. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I think I'm in pretty much the same uh, situation as Councillor Mulliner in as much as the time was substituted on this. I uh, didn't get to, uh, to the um, uh, site visit and, uh, and anyway, I would have needed to visit the other sites anyway from what, uh, from what I've heard, uh, even if I had. So I do rely in terms of um, views uh, and uh, some of the elements which have been raised. I, I have to rely on people who know far better. Um, but I, I want to drill down a little bit, if I may, into the tilted balance, because um, I think we're being advised on the handout, which uh, I'm also slightly uh, concerned about uh, the, the timing of its release. 
the handout says that, it, uh, that, that it's contrary to uh, the proposed development will conflict with policy RE3 of the local plan, as it harm has been identified. So we're being told that those are reasons to refuse, but that the tilted balance uh, uh, allows us to determine that the benefit outweighs the, um, the, the, the potential harm. Um, I, I want to know, first of all, actually, because before I go any further, can I have a quick answer to the question? Um, why has RE2 been removed from, from on page 19 of our committee papers? Uh, the, the paragraph that is being replaced there says that it's uh, identified that it would conflict with policy RE2 and RE3. I'm slightly confused in my head as to, I can't remember the, the, uh, exactly the difference in wording in RE2 and RE3. And so can officers just remind me on that? Thanks. And then I'd like to continue, if I may. Do you want to comment on that? Um, thank you, Chair. Yes, it's because um, policy RE2 does allow for very special circumstances. So um, therefore, it's not in conflict with that policy in terms of the way the officer's recommendation has, has put, that, put that forward. So, um, so therefore, there isn't a clear reason for refusal and actually not a conflict with RE, RE2 because RE2 allows for very special circumstances. Thank you, Chair. Thanks for that explanation. If I may continue, well, um, that doesn't actually, therefore, make any difference to the point that I'm that I'm going to make. Um, paragraph 182 of the um, MPPF uh, makes it absolutely clear that in this instance, uh, this is habitat development. It's very close to the world and East Phase One uh, SBA, um, and the tilted balance doesn't apply. And as it is um, clearly stated, and I think everybody accepts that it is contrary to policy RE3, we, we, we don't have a, a, any option in, in as much as that we must, as members, abide by the law and by the, and by the policy. That's what directs our, uh, our decisions. However compelling the arguments that have been made by Councillor Hess and uh, Councillor Dixon and other, other members as as to um, you know, very good reasons why this should be uh, it should be supported. If members turn to paragraph sixteen on page eighteen, you don't mind. Uh, page eighteen of your papers under Spar and Sack, it tells us that it's um, uh, within a couple of meters of the uh, of, of the SBI. I don't know the exact distance. Um, it says the proposal would result in increasing people permanently on the site uh, long term certainly I understand succession issues involved there uh, and could therefore result in impact on the Sparrow Sack and as Councillor uh, I think from from last week's meeting people are beginning to understand that means that we have to have a, um, a, a, a mitigation we have to have an appropriate assessment and we have to which we don't have and, and uh, we have to have uh, that mitigation secured most importantly and it says that um, here that um, due to the availability of alternative recreational opportunities in, in the area, which would it could divert residents from the use of the spas, the proposal would not would not have a likely significant effect. And we're talking about in combination whether it's one or, or twenty. The requirement for assessment is still uh, uh, of the mitigation. Now, na uh, Natural England's position, and it was I'm, I'm particularly quoting from the, their second response to Hillcrest at Elstead, an application. Um, uh, fr from about 18 months ago, where it says that uh, the availability of existing green space is not adequate mitigation for recreational disturbance on the spa. There's a body of evidence pointing to the fact that visitors will positively choose to visit a spa in, in preference to other open spaces, which may be closer or otherwise more convenient. Consequently, the presence of green space close to the development is not in itself sufficient grounds to conclude that new residents would not visit the site, the spa. So um, it's it's and they go on to say we do not believe the proposed adequate uh, proposal adequately considers the impact of in combination impacts to the world and heat spa. So whether we like it or not, uh, I am bound by uh, by the requirement of uh, uh, Wadden Zee and uh, their directives and the um, uh, conservation of uh, uh, habitats and species regulations 2017 uh, paragraph 93 uh, binds us. Um, to, to the requirement that we've got a, 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 uh, an appropriate assessment, as we haven't, paragraph 182, I mean, absolute fact, it's not here, there's nothing been put forward, we do need mitigation, it hasn't been secured um, or proposed, so that's why I did in the first place think it would be a good idea perhaps to uh, um, allow the 
applicant to go away and uh, and and revisit that and to come back uh, uh, if it was possible for them to to satisfy that as well. Um, yeah. It doesn't. We're make in it... circles, Joey, aren't we? I mean, uh, well, no, Chairman. I mean, I, I, I don't think we are. It's it's fact there that we that we do not have an assessment. Therefore, paragraph one eighty two tells us of the of the MPPF tells us that um, the tilted balance and uh, the presumption in favour of paragraph eleven of the MPPF does not apply. And we've been told that there is conflict with policy RE three. It's I think it's absolutely slam dunk clear in front of me. Um, you can't, we, we can't uh, argue with the facts, we can't argue with the law and the, and, and the policy that's put in front of us. So I will have to re refuse consent and, and, and obviously by law, if other members respect the, uh, um, the Nolan principles, and, uh, then, then uh, others will, uh, uh, must agree that they, that they have to do the same. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to, however, sorry I feel for the Matthias and their, their need. Um, this is something that needs sorting. I think, I think you made your point, Gary. I think we're all aware of that. Um, I've got three other candidates. We've been talking now for nearly 40 minutes on this item, which is right and proper. And we've got three other councillors who wish to speak. And I'll take those three councillors, and then we shall move to Council Fox if you wish to begin and vote on it. Hey, Councillor oh, sorry. Councillor Thank you, Chair. Um, straightforward, hopefully. Generally, I'm um, uh, yeah, pretty sympathetic with um what's been said about the need for a, a dwelling but i guess the question for me is and i guess in terms of their, their their perhaps future intentions as well why does the dwelling need to be located where it's proposed to be located on that site um presumably because of their line of business the land is going to be at a premium for them to want to use so i don't understand why there's a huge access track kind of cutting across, which presumably is going to take up a fair amount of space that could be used for, for, for business, the business purpose when the dwelling could be located anywhere else on the site that wouldn't you know, require um, a long access track cutting across the, the, the field, so to speak, towards the dwelling. <clears throat> the only reason I can think of in my mind is that that spot must be the nicest spot on the site for a, for a house to be positioned um, in respect of any kind of potential future um, need or, or for them to whatever they want to do with it in the future. So I guess, you know, the simple question is, is there a specific reason why the dwelling needs to be on that particular spot on the site uh, that necessitates that long track, especially given uh, that it's in the, you know, it's in the, um, the AONB? Do you want to comment on that before I move to that? you want to comment? Yeah, just a quick comment on that. So the, that very, very specific spot in the site because it's the highest ground level, sort of approximately. So they could sort of have the is what well, they they can have the best sort of view around the fields for yeah, security purposes. Councillor uh, uh, Keane. Councillor. Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, I agree with several of the speakers um, that have raised concerns about the location of this dwelling um i think it's quite the wrong place to have a dwelling especially given that there has to be so much hard standing going across fields um i don't believe there is an essential need i it hasn't been proven that we have these special circumstances for this particular um, business um although we all support local businesses we have to be mindful that we have as councillor coburn said we have to protect the AGLV, AONB, and so on. And I think that that is very important. We always have this debate every time that we have a property that or something that's going on or near to ANB, AONB, and we always try to protect it. So um, I'm very unhappy that we have to debate this. Um, that I've also, um, there was, um, I believe um, Councillor Hess said about security. Well, I'm sure this business has been going long enough to know where to go to find um, specialist, um, specialist businesses that can advise about security. And, you know, it's not for us to be worrying about the security of a business, it's for them to find out their need and to act upon it. And again, with perpetuity, I've seen firsthand a little cottage that was occupied um, by somebody who actually worked in an apple orchard and within six years that little property was doubled 
and it was sold for something in the region of 600,000 pounds. And that was within a very short time. So perpetuity, I don't believe, you can actually argue that that can be forced because I have seen it and it's really, really poor. So um, for me, I, I don't think I can support this application. Thank you. Finally, Councillor Neil. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm um, looking two ways on this as well. I'm not sure where we'd go. Um, and I've listened to the members and the arguments on both sides. Um, I sympathise with what Councillor Hunt is saying on about the location. It doesn't seem to be um, the best location from the uh, AONB aspects of where you would put a, a house on this site. Um, I don't personally get too worried about a, an occasional house in the AONB for, you know, there's already a lot of them there for various reasons. Um, I don't find one more in that location, general area, um, to be um, a, a problem myself. And I would want to support the local business. They're obviously growing the business. That means presumably more people to work the business um, and a need to have people, you know, close to where the operations are. So uh, I'm, I'm, you know, certainly conflicted as to which way to go on this for all the, all the reasons that have already been stated. Thank you, Chair. Right. I have a... Councillor Potts, you have four minutes if you wish to summarise your position. Chairman, thank you. Um, an interesting, very interesting debate. I think it, I just come back to the four main points for consideration, which we've all looked at, you've all looked at again tonight. Location, is this the right location? No. Uh, essential need, has that really been proven? Has it been evidenced? No. The impact on the green belt, well, we know that that will be harmful. Impact on AGLV, we know that will be harmful. Impact on AOMB, we know that will har be harmful. And for all of those reasons, I would urge the committee to refuse the application this evening. It's a building of significant size on this open field and it is wholly inappropriate development at this time. What I would also urge the applicant to do, should the committee refuse this tonight, is to please engage with the local community, please engage with the local count, parish council. They really do want to engage and they really do want to find a way to work with you to make your business work for the future. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee, for listening and debating tonight. Thank you very much. Right. We move to the recommendation, which says that subject to the completion of a Section 106 agreement to ensure the agricultural time perpetuity and subject to conditions 1 to 7 and informative permission be granted. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Abstain. Thank you, Chairman. So that's four in favour, six against, and two abstentions. So the application is lost. All right, we have to come to an alternative uh, uh, proposal. And uh, yes, Councillor Moore, on your hands. Um, the alternative motion is the, that the application be re be refused um, on the grounds of harm to. The green belt and AONB and AGLV providing a clear reason uh, for, 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 for refusal. Do we have a second? Well, a second to refuse it before we go into words. Carl, do you have any word? Or a second for that? Hmm? Oh, yes. Councillor King. Council, yeah, Councillor King B. Councillor Corbyn by just a second. Carl, do you have any word? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so, as uh, first reason for refusal, the proposed development, the the proposed dwelling would be inappropriate greenbelt development, which by definition is harmful to openness. No very special circumstances are considered to exist to outweigh this harm. The proposal is therefore contrary to policy RE2 of the local plan and the MPPF 2021. 
and uh, the second reason for refusal would be a dwelling in this location is considered to harmfully detract from the rural landscape character of the AOMB and AGLB. The proposed development is therefore contrary to policy RE3 of the local plan, paragraph 176 of the MPPF, and the Surrey Hills AOMB management plan policies P1, P2, and P3. Thank you, Chair. Is anybody happy with that? Thank you, Chairman. May I just explain to members that if they're going to decide that they're not going to refuse this on the grounds of there being no appropriate assessment, mm -hmm. then the net, we are going to be supporting, uh, we, are, we are going to be looking at, at Andrews of Hindhead, where the development there, which is in a similar position uh, close to us, to, 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 to the WH Spa, well, in his Spa. We, we, and we would be saying exactly the opposite things because Andrews of Hindhead have had to change their development to something which won't have an effect. We're dealing with the Lord Chairman, so pl please, if I may ask... ask. No, you're not. Kat Hyman, we've, we've been through all this many, many times. And, and the law found that the Council, under the advice we were taking, had been incorrect from uh, right through well, from 2007 so. I, I will go back, Kat Hyman, to the point we had a training session, I think, if it was said that we have, the officers have to be sort of believed unless you can prove otherwise, and you haven't done that. Uh, we accept the report as by Jackson, on, uh, yes. Thank you. And those against? In. Thank you, Chairman. So that's seven in favour, none against, and five abstentions. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, no, I, well, I'd like to carry on unless we were in real, in real need. Cancer. We had a long debate on that, but I mean, I, I was going to say if we reach two hours, I'm happy for a bit, we won't reach two hours yet. I mean, you can leave the room candidate, but you won't be able to vote in the next application. Sorry. Can I, can I suggest if, because I appreciate your medical difficulties, can I suggest you just like maybe wander up the back just to, so you can listen, but not. Right, can I move on please, which is the next one, which is, Ah, did you? Mm. Hunter's left, so I presume you won't be able to participate. All right, the next one is WA 2022-00498, the land at Andrews of Hindhead Limited, Andrews, Postal Road, Hindhead, the erection, erection of a 74-bed care home, use class C2, with associated car parking, landscaping, and vehicle access, following demolition of the existing buildings and structures, a revision of WA 2021, 01365. Ruth, do to present, please. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, good evening, members. Uh, just like to draw your attention to a written update sheet which was circulated on Monday. Um, it's got an additional representation summarised on it, um, and it also updates councillors on the council's latest five year housing land supply position. Um, I'll take the committee through the presentation with some photos, but it should be the site should be familiar to. Uh, quite a few of you because this um, an application for a high dependency care home was considered by the committee last October and this is a revision to that scheme. So this is the site location plan. The site's located on the northwest side of the Portsmouth Road. It's within the Hazemere assessment, assessment boundary. And the users on the site currently comprise an office, a workshop, retail use and a personal training studio. So the area just gives you a bit more context. You can see the site here. Um, for anyone that knows the Stepping Stones School, which is quite a modern building, that's located here. And this is a three-storey um, development of flats called Royal Huts Avenue, and you'll see more photos of those later. There's also some TPO trees that go along the frontage of the site and also along the side. And just to widen out the area a bit further, this is the Barons 
garage and the, and the punch bowl just off the um, image there. Um, and this is another care home called Moorfields, which is quite a sizable three storey building. So just going to some street scene photos, effectively this is the view you see as you go along the Portsmouth Road. The buildings aren't of any great architectural merit and as I go through the photos you'll see there's sort of quite a, a mixed variety of buildings. So this is the view from Royal Huts Avenue, photo C at the top. Photo D is a view from the pavement on Portsmouth Road and you can just see residential dwellings um, behind the site. And this area, you can see how sort of you've got an area of green space and car parking in the southwestern corner. So these are some, this is at the rear of the site, and these are some Nissan huts. Um, and the bottom photo is the three-story residential development that I referred to earlier. Uh, and then this is just really, this slide really just highlights the fact that you um, already have a care home of um, three-storey height um, within the vicinity of the site. So there is some planning history to this, as I mentioned, and it is a highly material consideration in considering this current planning application. Um, the previous application, which was also for a 74-bed high-dependency end-of-life care home, went to committee on the 12th of October, I've put 2012 there, it was actually 2021. Um, and I think it's important to focus in on the reason for refusal for that. There was only one reason for refusal. Um, and forgive me, I will read it out, even though it's on the screen. And it says the proposal by virtue of its scale, mass and design, which result in a cramped and crowded development, that would fail to take the opportunity available for improving the character and quality of the area and the way it functions. As such, it would harm the character and appearance of the surrounding area and street scene. This would conflict with policy TD1 of the local plan part one 2018, retain policies D1 and D4 of the local plan 2002, the Hazemere design statement 2012 and paragraphs 126 and 130 of the MPPF 2021. Um, I suppose to note at this point in time that uh, since this application was last at committee, the Hazelmere neighbourhood plan has been adopted. Um, having reviewed the policies within that plan, they're all contained within the report, but there are no sort of significant policy implications as to how we sh should consider this scheme as a result of the Hazelmere neighbourhood plan being made. So essentially from here on in, I'll just show you some comparison drawings between the refuse scheme and the revised scheme. So essentially, this is the block plan. Um, you'll see that uh, they're, very, they're very similar. The position of the building and the footprint of the building is very similar. Um, and in terms of levels of car parking provision, they're the same. So there are 39 spaces in total, one of which would be for an ambulance and deliveries. So again, this is the refused ground floor plan and the revised ground floor plan. <coughs> This is the, the refused first floor plan and the revised first floor plan. There are, uh, and there are a few small differences between these floor plans in terms of the, the <coughs> terrace here. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, but generally the floor plans are pretty similar. And I think where the, where the main changes really come in are in terms of how the elevations are treated. Um, part of the feedback and understanding that we had from the committee in October was that the elevations on the original scheme were quite austere, um, pretty drab, I, uh, uh, I think was, was uh, essentially part of the feedback. Um, so what the applicants have tried to do during the uh, post application process and prior to submitting this application um, is to produce some elevations um, that are effectively more traditional in appearance and more pleasing to the eye in design terms. So although the form of the building is similar, um, the treatment has changed in terms of the fact that you have sort of pitched roofs on the top of bay projections, you have pitched roofs on top of dormers, um, and they've also lightened the render, because um, the render in this image, as you can see, is sort of a relatively gray appearance, and they've tried to lighten that up by using cream, and also address 
uh, this part of the elevation here, where here it was relatively plain and they've tried to add some interest here. <coughs> So this is again a comparison between the um, refused rear elevation and proposed, and it's really that same sort of, it, it, it's down to the design detail and the treatment of the elevations in terms of putting pitches on the, on the bay projections and the dormers, etc. Um, and also slightly changing the ratio of brickwork to render as well. And this is the refused northeast elevation, so the entrance would be off Royal Huts Avenue. Um, and that shows how um, the revised scheme compares to that. <coughs> and that is the refused southwest elevation and the revised southwest elevation. So we've got some views of how the building would appear in the street scene. So these two are, well, the top one is from the Royal Huts Avenue, and that's the elevation where the main entrance would be. And the second one is the view from the car park, and you get an idea of how the building would appear as you look at it along the Portsmouth Road frontage. This is a, the, this, the, the, the development has sort of been superimposed into a photo from the Portsmouth Road frontage, so you get an idea of, from the top visuals of how it would <coughs> sit within that frontage. Um, and I think one of the views that I found particularly helpful in assessing this current application, which we didn't have in the, with the previous application, is showing the development within the context of the street scene um, and how it fits in relation to Royal, Royal Huts Avenue development, which is this three-storey residential building here. Um, and from an officer perspective, um, it's my view that this shows that the development would be um, acceptable in terms of bulk mass and design and in keeping with what's in the vicinity. So um, there have been a lot of representations on this again in relation to um, the impact on the doctor's surgery um, and to do with staffing levels for all those um, NHS providers where the impact of this development would be felt. But we did have a debate about that at the last committee, and I would just like to emphasise that that isn't the planning consideration. Um, the other things that I think we really need to knock out of the equation, given that we're only down to one reason for refusal, are the issues that were discussed previously, where really there hasn't been any change as a result of this proposal, and they would be the existing, whether the existing proposed use are acceptable, the impact on residential amenity, impact on the trees, highways and car parking, the effect on the SPA, and the impact on infrastructure. So the judgment really does come down to whether the previous reason for refusal has been addressed, um, and it's officer view that it has, and also factored into that is the council's five-year housing land supply position, um, and it is in your update sheet that the council considers it's now, its housing land supply is now four point three years, and this site is actually within the council's five-year housing land supply document. So the tilted balance does apply in this circumstance. Um, Offers a view that development is acceptable and are recommending approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. We have two public speakers on this matter. The first one is a Dr. Edward Bell. Dr. Bell, are you here? Oh, I am. Oh, Zoom. Oh, Zoom. So I've got four minutes. Thank you. Can, can you see me? Can you hear me? Um, I, I'm, I'm assuming you can. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Ed Bell. I'm one of the, the GPs from the local uh, local surgery, Grayshot Surgery, and I'm speaking um, on behalf of my colleagues at the surgery and also many of the local residents um, uh, in the surrounding areas of the proposed development. Uh, we all wanted to strongly uh, object to this, this proposal still. Firstly, we learned that um, the local residents hadn't really been given adequate opportunity to raise their views and objections to this proposal. Contrary to um, what the developer states in their manifesto, none of the local residents in the surrounding area, in the surrounding roads, actually received formal notification of this resubmission. Take, for example, uh, Glenville Gardens, which is a road of 23 houses which runs along the southern border of the um, proposed development. Not a single person in that road um, received formal notification um, as to this, uh, this proposed uh, development. 
Um, national policy also would um, suggest that um, health and social, social care should be collaboratively planned between healthcare, um, uh, social care and also planning and none of the healthcare um, organisations such as the CCG, the Royal Surrey and ourselves were notified of this, uh, this planning application. Um, the Royal Surrey wanted to object, but they weren't aware of it with enough time to, to do so. Um, we weren't notified, as, a, as I say, and social services, um, uh, social services, thankfully, were able to lodge their objection to the to the care home. A, con a concern of the of the local residents in particular was that the um, the design of the building was still very cramped. It's a relatively small area for such a large care home to fit into, and from that perspective, they don't feel that it's adequately changed enough since the the last proposal. The uh, there's a survey. There was a survey done of the local sewer um, in 2008, which showed that it was inadequate. It had an inadequate capacity uh, to support a building of this magnitude, um, and nothing has done, been done to, to rectify this since. Um, quite regularly, um, sewage leaks out of manholes into neighbouring roads around the around the area. Um, this was looked into in 2016. And the sewer is found to be badly damaged, sinking into the ground in places, badly blocked, and in need of an urgent need of, of, of repair. Which, against the, um, the the local residents, have been trying um, to engage Thames Thames Water to sort this out, but um, have been unable to, to do so, and the problem still remains. So, firstly, we don't think we can take Thames Water's report into the sewage system uh, at face value, and second, uh, and secondly, uh, this problem could only get worse with a care home of this magnitude being built in in, in the area. It's going to be a health hazard for local residents, and it's going to be a health hazard for for the um, the residents of the proposed. New, new care home. I think it, it is an important consideration we feel that um, albeit we appreciate there's a national need for more care home beds and we appreciate that there's a, a need in Waverley as a whole for more care home beds but there's definitely no need in Hindhead for more care home beds. It's already got an unusually large number of care home beds um, compared with other areas of Waverley. 27% of these beds are unfilled 33% of beds in care homes equivalent to the current developments are currently unfilled. So why, why is this relevant? It means that people will move in from outside of Waverley, which won't have an impact on the, on the housing stock. Evidence suggests that um, people want to move to care homes close to where their current place of residence, but the people of Hindhead can already do so. People moving in from other parts of Waverley would be doing so against their best wishes. Uh, and therefore, you know, the, the new care home should be focused in parts of Waverley where they're actually actually needed. It's not sustainable for the local population to support this care home. And we strongly uh, disagree with the fact that this is not a planning issue. If you put too many of one service in an area, it's going to be impossible for the local area to provide enough staff to support these care homes. The existing care homes already have many vacancies that they can't fill and putting another care home in the, in the area seconds, is only going to make Bell, things worse. Thank you. We have another public speaker who is Douglas Bond, who I think is here. But, uh, Mr. Bond, you have four minutes, as you know, by now. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members. My name's Douglas Bond from Wolf Bond Planning. I'm speaking clearly in support of the proposal for what we uh, genuinely believe will, will be a high quality new care home for this part of your borough. As you've heard, this application is the result of a previous refusal, the main focus of which was one of design. All other issues, as you've heard from your planning officer, including the principal of the care home, were not disputed. In this revised application, the applicant has therefore focused on the main outstanding issue of design and listened carefully to members' concerns when revisiting that design of the refuse scheme, which resulted in the proposal before you tonight. As part of this process, the applicant prepared several alternative design options in pre-application discussions following the previous refu refusal. 
A new design emerged from these discussions, and this was adopted by the applicant in the application before you tonight. I'm pleased to say that the constructive dialogue has resulted in what we hope we all see as a better design, which is more sympathetic to its setting. This design is less contemporary than the previous scheme and incorporates traditional architectural features that better reflects the surrounding local vernacular. The harmonious color uh, palette and use of materials that responds to local design clues results in a more traditional feel and appearance of the scheme overall, which better reflects the character and appearance of Hindhead. Moreover, the new design through different use and positioning materials successfully breaks the building down into rhythms of individual smaller segments, giving a different feel to the scale and mass of the proposal compared to the previous scheme and is more successful than the design of the larger unrelieved buildings at Royal Huts Avenue on the adjoining site. The new care home will, you, will uh, use will enhance the site with its landscaping scheme along both Portsmouth Road and the Royal Huts Avenue frontages. This includes new trees, hedges, grass verges, landscape gardens and sitting out areas, which will add a vibrant character to the site when seen from Portsmouth Road. This will significantly enhance the character and appearance of the site itself and its context. In addition, the application images uh, that you've been part showed on your presentation tonight also confirms how the building in appearance, scale, mass and location sits comfortably within the site behind retained TPO trees along the Portsmouth Road frontage. And these will continue to characterize the street scene at this point. Overall, the proposal now represents a significantly improved scheme in design terms that will enhance the character and appearance of the area, with a sympathetic and more harmonious design, thereby addressing the previous reason for refusal. The applicant has listened carefully to members' concerns, and in addressing these, this has resulted in the improved scheme which you see before you tonight, and which we believe we can now all be proud of. I therefore hope the Office of Recommendation for Approval can be supported and the long awaited redevelopment of this dilapidated site can commence to the benefit of the site itself, the wider surrounding area and obviously the community at large. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bond. Right, members, I, <laughs> yeah, my hands on you. It's, uh, I think Councillor Deere ought to go first, actually. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, this is still a depressing application as far as I'm concerned. It's hard to disagree with anything Dr. Bell said, although they are not, unfortunately, material planning considerations, so they don't enter into the calculations here. Nor does this scheme provide houses we actually need in the borough, but again, naturally, England won't have that, so again, that's not a material planning consideration, unfortunately. Um, there have been some trivial alterations to the external appearance, um, which in the eye of the beholder may or may not uh, improve matters but um, I've got to a point where I've tried as far as I can see as far as I'm concerned to uh, help be part of a process that brings about a notable and an impressive building for the location um, to my mind this still isn't it but having said that and I'm not going to vote for it but having said that I think we, we've got to recognise that we, uh, we've got to a point where we need to move on and I won't vote against it either. Thanks very much. Right. Councillor Hunt, you were away when we started this and you can't vote, well, I'll let you speak. Sorry, needed a wee. Um, but thanks for letting me speak. Uh, um, yeah, so I don't know. It might it might just be me, um, but uh, if the if the previous application was rejected on the basis of one point being the scale, mass, and design result in a cramped and crowded development, then from what I can see, uh, it's completely identical the one that they've come back with, apart from a couple of very 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 minor changes to, to rendering and, and slight pieces of design. But um, I mean, I, personally, I think it's a bit embarrassing actually that, that they could come back and suggest that that's not uh, less cramped and less crowded because to me, it looks exactly the same as it did before. So if it was rejected last time on the basis of it being uh, a cramped and crowded development, then to me, it, it should be rejected this time on the basis of being cramped and crowded because it isn't any different. 
Thank you. Councillor Dixon. Uh, yes, I have to concur with my colleague, Councillor Hunt. I think if um, if the, uh, the the people who own this nursing home thought it was just the design that was the problem, they clearly didn't read the refusal. Uh, but having said that, um, it's, uh, I, have to, I have to refer all my colleagues to um, paragraph 12 on page 40 of this submission, uh, which says um, that this will actually, while it is a residential home, it is equivalent to 41 dwellings. And um, the three paragraphs in section 12 set out all of the most recent appeals and the fact that um, unless, um, unless the site is located in an area or involves an asset of particular importance that provides a clear re reason for refusal, then permission must be granted. So unfortunately, 41 dwellings is 41 dwellings. And so, very reluctantly, I think I will vote in favour of this. Councillor Colburn next. Yes, I mean, I'm a bit like Councillor Deer. I want to see the Taj Mahal, you know, on every site that comes <laughs> in front of us and, and you reluctantly have to admit that we're not going to get it. Um, I have to say, I, I think the applicant has worked hard with uh, the officer and has really tried to achieve what they wish to achieve on the site and improving it from our point of view. And although it was, was it scale, mass and design, I mean, my biggest issue was design last time. And of course, mass is, is one of those things that can be um, slightly changed by, the, by design because it just doesn't, so. Because it, it, it you know, yeah, it's just, yeah, they were sort of thought they were going to stop me in my mid flow. <laughs> Lost my thread now. Um, so what I was <laughs> what I was going to say was you can design out something that looks mass. Cramped is a different matter. I thought the last one was a very dead sort of design. I didn't like it. I didn't like the palette of colours, but it was more the, the frontage onto Portsmouth Road. Uh, I thought it was just dead. You know, I really couldn't see any life in it at all, no relief, no, no breaking up of materials. Uh, I still don't like much of the uh, fenestration, but then that's probably just personal. Um, but given where we are and given the work that's been put in, yes, in terms of uh, overall size, it, it hasn't changed at all, but I think it's going to be a much more acceptable building uh, on that site, given that it's going to be landscaped as well. Um, unless somebody persuades me otherwise i think i'm minded to support the the application thank you thank you very much uh Councillor Rubini. thank you chair um when i looked at this at first time it was like everybody else it, it just looked like a block on the original um, application however i do believe that the actual applicant has gone some way to making it look more relevant and i think to me the most important slide that was shown was the street scene. It, it does seem to blend in with the other houses that are around there. It's of an appropriate height. And if you are driving along there, of course, it's the old Portsmouth Road. It is slightly screened. I don't see that that's going to cause any problems in viewing along that particular road. The other thing I, I would point out is that there was talk about the sewerage. If you look at page 59, under the flood risk, etc. It says Thames Water have raised no objection in relation to foul water, sewage network, infrastructure capacity. They advise that any sewer flooding in the area is attributed to blockages rather than lack of capacity in the network. So I, I do feel if, if that's the Water Authority are actually saying that, we ourselves, as they are a statutory body, would find it difficult to refuse on those grounds. So although I would like to see, obviously, that we don't get this sort of sewage blockage, I can't see how we can refuse it on that. So all in all, I, I can't see how we could refuse this application. Now it looks better. And to me, it would, it would fit in there. So I'd be happy to actually accept this design. Thank you. Councillor Molina. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we refused on three grounds last time, um, mass scale and design. I agree the design has been improved a little and that's good. Um, Councillor Dixon is quite right, the tilted balance applies and that is <clears throat> perhaps regrettably 
the swing factor. If we still had a flat balance, I don't see how one could logically um, not vote against on the same basis as, as last time, but the reality is different. And um, so for that reason, with no great enthusiasm, I shall be supporting the officer's recommendation. Councillor Hess. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, basically, the floor plans look the same as the pr previous. Um, so it's the same size, basically, but they've changed the elevation treatment um, with more um, pitched roofs, etc. So, you know, I give them credit for going away and reworking it, e even if it is fairly, um, um, uh, it's a fairly sort of thin makeover really to um, make it more acceptable. But nevertheless, I think it does. We've got a very similar sort of um, nursing home, not long built in West Street in Farnham, actually, probably of about the same size. And um, although if you look at it on plan, it's quite big, but when you actually look at it um, uh, in the flesh, as it were, it, it's quite, um, it nestles in quite well. So I think with planting and trees and landscaping, um, this scheme will not be as obtrusive as people are worried. Certainly what's there now is um, redundant and horrible, and this is a good use for it. Um, so I would like to ask um, the officer, Ruth, um, if the applicant has given any details of the brick and the tile, whether it's um, a clay or a man-made concrete clay look-alike, or whether you've had the materials sampled to you, um, because obviously the type of facing brick, the type of tile will make a difference over the years to come, the way they will actually mellow or not. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Yes, the applicant did provide not actual samples of the materials, but they have sort of provided some visuals of potential materials. Um, what I would add to that is that materials are reserved by condition, so we will get samples in. And also during the course of discussions, since the previously refused application and this application, um, I think the applicant has been given a very clear indication both at the previous committee and through the course of discussions since then that materials are massively important to the success of the appearance of this development so they're very aware of that and we will be pushing hard for high quality materials when they're submitted as part of the discharge of the condition thank you very much and councillor hyman yes thank you chairman um Yes, I think I, I agree with Councillor Hester. This is relatively, um, it is cosmetic or superficial in, uh, in, in terms of the changes that have been made since it came before us. Um, but uh, I, I think that's the constraints that we put the developer under actually here. I, I, I agree absolutely with, um, with what uh, Dr. Edward Bell said. Uh, um, the, 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 the problems here is that um, uh, this council is uh, in, forcing the developer here to abide by the uh, uh, habitats constraints which are not being the previous uh, uh, item that was on the agenda uh, members decided they didn't want to um uh, to, to to force that developer so we're, we're running two different systems alongside and i'm very sorry uh, sorry to the developer that uh, uh, developers cannot know where they stand because people simply won't um, uh, face up the facts We've got a problem uh, with this. It's not what the developer wants. It's not what um, a, a large proportion of the, uh, of the of the residents would prefer to have. That, but uh, we don't have a choice because of the decision that was made um, a, a some months ago, years ago even. So um, I'm, I think I've got to support this. I know they don't want to build it, and people don't want it. But I've got to, I've got to support it because I really think that they've done their their level best at uh, trying to satisfy the unsatisfactory um, constraints that we've put them under. Thank you, Councillor Neil. Thank you. Uh, I will be supporting this uh, application. Uh, I'm aware of the reservations of the committee and what was said in the last time we looked at this one. Um, but it seems to me that the applicant has responded quite positively to the, the main um, reasons that it was refused last time, which have been mentioned already. Um, so I think it's now time to support it and go ahead. 
Thank you. And finally, I think Gary Keane. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Um, well, I can't say that I'm really hugely excited about the changes to, to the actual um, buildings, um, but um, as has, we've been reminded, it gives us 41 homes, something we can't argue against. Um, but I would like to say at this point that I do feel hugely sorry for um, the local health services within our area. I know it's not a planning application, but Dr. Bell did put across the feelings of the local community and the health service providers within that area. It's, it's um, with great um, regret really that I shall have to say that I approve it, or I'll support it, um, but I can't say that I'm particularly happy with it. Thank you. All right, we'll move to the recommendation, shall we? The recommendation is that subject to the completion of the work. Uh, so, the election uh, the recommendation is that subject to conditions 1 to 29 and informants 1 to 14 permission be granted. Those in favour, please raise their hand. Please, Kimberly, when you got it ready. Thank you, Chairman. So we have 10 in favour and one abstention. Then the application is granted. Can we move on to the final item, please? Which is WA 2021 101238, the land at Deerwood, Hill Road, Hazelmere, election of three dwellings with associated car parking and landscaping following demolition of the existing outbuildings as amended by plans received on the 8th of December 2021. The officer is James Kidger. Over to you, James. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good evening, members. Yeah, this is a scheme for three dwellings um, at Deerwood, just off Wilmer Hill Road, Hazelmere. Uh, this is the location plan um, site outlined in red. And here we have an aerial photograph. Um, the site is just indicated by the blue dot um, somewhere in the middle towards the bottom. And to the north, uh, we've got the existing spread of dwellings on the easterly side of Bulmer Hill Road. Um, and to the west, we have the housing estate, uh, which is within the Hazelmere settlement boundary, um, a much denser form uh, of development. And now some photos. Um, this is the access, existing access to the site from Bulmer Hill Road. And the road on the right-hand side leads to the estate. And um, this is a shot from that estate road um, showing the screening between the site and Wilmer Hill Road. And this is a shot from uh, Wilmer Hill Road uh, looking north and the site is on the right hand side and just in the distance, the estate road on the left. Um, this one is looking at the site um, in the southeasterly direction, um, approximately from the entrance way. Uh, this is within the site, uh, looking towards the existing development of French and Paul. <coughs> and another shot looking toward French and Paul from within the site, a little bit further down um, in the southeast direction. Uh, this one is French and Paul itself, uh, quite a substantial um, dwelling. And this one is Abbey Wood, which is the dwelling next door to French and Hall. You can just see French and Hall on the left hand side of the shot. And here we have the proposed site plan, uh, three houses uh, towards the rear of the existing garden of Deerwood. And Deerwood um, is the house you just see indicated by the cursor there. And here we have the proposed street scenes uh, showing three slightly differing uh, design houses. 
um, and the one on the bottom is an indicative view um, of the screening from Wilmer Hill Road. And then just the detailed um, drawings of each house. This would be plot one, uh, plot two, and plot three. All the dwellings in approximately the same style, but slightly uh, differing details. And the next slide is a comparison, um, the current scheme on the right and a previously refused uh, scheme on the left that was dismissed at appeal um, and that was for seven houses. And the key issues uh, for this scheme, we've got the impact on the character of the area, so the design and appearance, the proposed density and the landscape, it's within an AGLV, uh, countryside just adjacent the Hazelmere settlement boundary. Uh, the impacts on the immunity of neighbours, uh, particularly with regards to overlooking and the, uh, the five year housing land supply, the tilted balance, which, as my colleagues have already said, uh, we have a 4.3 year um, housing land supply. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, James. Right, we have two public speakers on this item. One first is a Mark Ogden, who I think is. Is he on Zoom? Oh, on, Zoom. on Zoom. Good evening, Mark. Uh, you have four minutes, Mark. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to voice our significant concerns around the proposal. And I'm speaking on behalf of all seven sets of neighbours in the French and Paul site who object to the proposal. We'd like to make the following key points. Um, the site contained within the French and Paul local landscape character area has previously been reject rejected on appeal, where the inspector found that the main issue was the effect on the proposal on the character and appearance of the area. And we strongly believe that the appeal decision was not a marginal one. The inspector's decision included, and I quote, that even if the tilt of balance were applicable in this instance, the harm I have identified to the character and appearance of the area and to future residents of the proposal significantly and demonstrably outweigh the contribution to the uh, five-year housing land supply. The current proposed development is 0.24 hectares and the previous proposal was 0.27. Uh, and this is materially similar scale of development in the AGLV, introducing a significant built form where none currently exists. The previous proposal related to seven smaller houses, whereas the revised current proposal is for three larger detached houses, but the site development area is still 89% of the scale of the previously rejected proposal. There's also another site in the French and Hall LLCA, which has had an application determined at appeal, the appeal for change of use of just one single storey existing outbuilding of the lodge was rejected with the appeal officer noting, and I quote, the change of use would give a rise to a, small, a more suburban appearance, harmful to the rural character of this part of the countryside and the AGLV. Uh, moving on, we also believe that the proposal conflicts with Waverley Planning Policies D2 and D4, as evidenced by the Hazelmere design statement state, uh, stating that garden land should only be permitted where there is garden area appropriate to new and existing dwellings. And Abbey Wood has the smallest garden and is set on a plot of one fifth of an acre. The gardens of the proposed development range from approximately 10 to 16 metres deep. As such, the site is cramped and overdeveloped with the gable wall of plot one being only 3.3 metres from Abbey Wood's garden boundary, which is in fact actually significant closer than the previous rejected appeal which was six metres from the boundary. And Waverley's SPD is also useful guidance for residential developments. This states that if there is less than 18 metres from a second storey window to neighbouring amenity space, then they should have a sill height of 1.7 metres from the internal floor. And none of the plots conform to this standard. In fact, as you'll see on the plans, they have a floor to ceiling bedroom windows. And importantly, there's another important consideration with the proposal, and it should be judged by the Hazelmere Neighbourhood Plan has been adopted from November 2021 and is now part of the statutory development plan. It's important to note that the proposed site is outside the Hazelmere settlement boundary and policy H 1.3 states that development outside the settlement boundary will be strictly controlled. And the site at Deerwood was put forward as a possible development site in the plan under LA ID reference 1069, but was rejected, and I quote, as development would be inconsistent with the findings of the landscape study 2014 and would likely have a negative landscape impact. The neighborhood plan is the vision to 2032, 
and a referendum was held where a resounding 87.4% of respondents voted to implement the neighbourhood plan. The electorate, I'm sure, will be very surprised that less than six months after becoming effective, the plan to 2032 was already being set aside. They would rightly wonder if the time, money and effort was worth it and if there's any point in substance to the neighbourhood plan. We therefore submit that it should be rejected with the same policy up re reasons upheld by the two different planning inspectors on appeal within the immediate area. It doesn't conform to policies RE1, RE3, TD1. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And the last public speaker, I hope we get your, your surname right. Andrew Bandos. Andrew. Dear councillors, my name is Andrew Brandos from DNM Planning and I speak on behalf of my, my client, the applicant. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of my client on this planning application. I'll keep my speech brief as the planning officer's report is detailed and comprehensive and I believe fully justifies the recommendation for approval. The site, whilst being located within the countryside beyond the Greenbelt, is nevertheless located directly adjacent to the settlement boundary on the opposite side of Warmer Road. Important part of uh, the proposal is, is its previous planning history, um, particularly as already shown to you, the appeal proposal for seven dwellings on the site, which was dismissed by the inspector previously. The reasons for, for dismissing that appeal was primarily on the number of houses proposed and the lack of place space for the development of seven dwellings. Seven dwellings also had significant amount of car parking associated with it, and it was a lot of development on the site. There was no objection from the planning inspector to the principle of housing on the site. The inspector acknowledged the site's well-related proximity to the settlement area, but felt that seven dwellings were too much for the site. The current proposal is for only three detached dwellings that are each of a modest size with space around each property. The proposed design layout, the number of dwellings proposed, is considered to fully overcome the previous inspector's reasons for dismissing the appeal. The scheme now proposes for a low level development, one that is in keeping with the character of housing on this side of the road. The scheme will ensure that the character of the amenities of the neighbouring occupiers are not harmed in any material way. The scheme has been designed to ensure that adequate garden depths are proposed, together with suitable spacing around the proposed houses, ensuring that the development maintains an open aspect without resulting in any overlooking to neighbouring properties. We concur with the officer's report where it is stated that the proposal would not have a significant visual impact on the wider countryside and area of great landscape value. We note the concerns raised by neighbouring properties regarding highway and access issues, but as pointed out in the officer's report, the county highways officers raised no objections to proposal on highway grounds. The proposal makes adequate provision for off-street parking, as well as turning space within the site. We note that the officer's report in conclusion acknowledges the fact that the council does not have a five-year housing land supply, and that due weight needs to be given to the tilted balance in favour of sustainable development. We consider a proposed development of just three modest sized detached houses in this sustainable location is acceptable on its own merits, but at the same time, the need to provide a five year housing land supply should also be taken into account. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Right. Can you just get this one off? Ah, can you do it? Oh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, the appeal decision I thought was an interesting read. The planning inspector made a clear distinction between land on this side of the Wilmer Hill Road and land on the other. The, other, the land on the west side of Wilmer Hill Road, Hatchet's Drive, is a very much higher density, which is presumably why the applicant had a go at the scheme they did last time. But that, was, that seemed to me the reasoning that the inspector came to. This is a very much less intensive scheme. Uh, and to my mind, very much more acceptable. Uh, as we've been told, the tilted balance, you know, we haven't got a five year housing land supply, the tilted balance is engaged. Um, development control policies are therefore deemed out of date, uh, whether we like it or not. So I think it's very hard to resist um, the officer's recommendation on this one. Thank you. Councillor Molina. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, this is actually particularly interesting given the remarks I made right at the start of the meeting. Um, and having checked my understanding of the Mug Hill case, this is actually extremely, if you like, educational. The situation is that um, although the first one was clearly a highly optimistic application trying to squeeze seven small houses into the area, and it's not surprising that the inspector had three reasons, 
uh, one of which character and appearance and the effect on the, of the character and appearance of the area, the effect of the proposal on the living conditions of one particular plot and whether it made adequate provision for, for play space. Now, um, I think the last two have been satisfactorily dealt with by reducing the density significantly. This is affected by the AGLV and paragraph 11 of the MPPF 11D1 um, could be considered, but I think, and this is where I'll take it up with the officers um, offline, uh, what should be made clear is it is for us as the decision taker to reach a decision whether or not the harm to AGLV amounts to a clear reason for, for refusal. The case law makes it quite clear it is not enough simply to say that the policy is engaged, it has to be applied, so we actually have to make up our minds how serious we think the, the harm is, and if we think it is sufficiently serious to give a clear reason for refusal, then it's a matter of applying the flat or untilted balance, because you never get to 11D2, which is where the tilted balance springs from. I have had a look at the site from, from the road. Um, it is difficult to be as upset about it in terms of impact on the AGLV as one might have expected. Um, it is very close indeed to the much higher density on the other side of, of Wilmer Hill Road. But then again, that's what roads often, often do. I think I am marginally in, in favour of it because of the fact that the tilted balance is likely to be engaged. I think that it's a bit hard to say that the harm to the AGLV is sufficient to mean that there's a clear reason for, for refusal. And if you can't say that, then you get into 11D2 territory and the absence, the admitted absence of a five-year housing land supply means the tilted balance would be engaged. And I suspect that on that basis, it would probably succeed at, at appeal. So my current inclination is to support the officer's recommendation, but I'll listen very carefully to what others have to say. Councillor Hyman. Thank you. Well, I, I, I agree 100% um, with what Councillor Mulliner has said, up to the point, of course, whereby this is another application. Woolmer Forest is uh, um, a, a SAC and, and, and SPA um, is one of the uh, one of the SBAs which we are being refused uh, the, the uh, bird numbers on where well, you don't know the extent of the risk until there's an assessment being conducted. We don't know what risk we can take and can't take. And uh, in the absence of an appropriate assessment, paragraph 182 applies, and so the tilted balance does apply. And we can be absolutely certain of that, because we know that this is well within the, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably within a, a matter of hundreds of yards of the, of the SBA. I'd, I'd like officers to confirm exactly how far this site is from, uh, fr from both the Devil's Punch Bowl and uh, the Ulmer Forest uh, at Sack and Spa. We do need to know that, and we do need to be, because there's a very, very much an issue of cat predation, which should override all other considerations. And uh, we do need to take, uh, to take account of the fact that as there is not uh, an appropriate assessment, uh, there is uh, an in combination impact on the spa. Um, that, that is fully accepted in, uh, in, in our local plan and uh, th uh, throughout. So we do need to take account of that. Paragraph 182 overrides the, uh, the, the tilted balance and I will be uh, voting against it on those grounds. Thank you. Officers, do you want to comment? Thank you, Chair. Just, we just clarifying one, one point. The AGLV isn't a footnote policy in the same way that the AAO and B is. Um, therefore, you're not looking at um, 11DI, you're looking at um, II, which is um, where the adverse impacts would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits. Um, thank you, Chair. Yeah, anyway, uh, well, I'll, I'll take, unless it's related to that, Councillor Hammond, I'll take uh, Councillor Keane next, but, and Councillor Coleman. Is it related to that, Councillor Hammond, or not? Uh, only that um, that's irrelevant because of paragraph 182, thanks. 
Right, Councillor Keane and Councillor Corburn. Councillor Keane. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I just have one comment really on this. I, um, I would like to remind um, councillors that there is a very large secondary school not far along from this development. Um, and I would ask that the officers um, actually have conditions in that if this is approved tonight, that um, any, any works do not coincide with school pick up and, and, and leaving times because it will cause chaos along the Warmer Hill Road. Thank you. Um, thank you. I think really I'm just going to repeat Chris's point about AGLV. It's been, you know, those of us surrounded by countryside beyond the green belt will know how flimsy it is when it uh, comes to an appeal to, to defend it, unless you've got, you know, rigid five-year house and land supply and policies in place. Um, it's the countryside round Allfold, round Cranley, and of course, round Farnham. And, you know, the idea that uh, you, you should be looking at AGLV as something very, very different is it, just, it's a local designation, that's all it is. And it may even disappear when the AONB review is completed. So, you know, everyone wants to protect the green fields. <laughs> you know, we've been saying it for a long time, but when they are designated as countryside beyond the green belt, um, I'm afraid they have very little protection unless there's a full development plan in place in a five-year house plan supply. Thank you. Does any other council wish to speak or shall we move to the recommendation? Oh, yeah, Councillor James, sorry, I do apologise. Sorry, I, uh, could we have um, the officers telling us about a con the added condition about no construction drawing? Because there's nothing in the conditions about the timing of any building operation hours that I can see, unless I, unless my glasses are... There's nothing about construction times or anything. Officers, although I do think it's going to be quite difficult. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, we, we can add a, a construction transport management plan condition if members are minded. Uh, okay. okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Sorry, was there an answer to my question in respect of the distance from the uh, from the spa? Yeah, it's between uh, 400 metres and five kilometres from the Wheel and Heath to SBA. Right, can we now move to the recommendation? Okay, uh, subject to conditions 1 to 11 and comments 1 and 2, permission be granted. And against 1. And I'm staying. Thank you, Chairman. That's 11 in favour, one against, and no abstentions. Therefore, the application is carried. Right. Thank